Hello and welcome to the first episode of my How to Make a Minigame series. In this episode we're going to start off the series by looking at rock, paper, scissors. I'm sure you're fairly familiar with the concept so I won't dilly dally on that. But the reason we're going to have a look at this particular game is that it's very simple and I can use it to demonstrate good and bad game design. However, before we do that I want to give you all a brief introduction to minigame making in general. Well, many games originated to be smaller games within larger games that allow players to spend more time doing less strenuous tasks. The structure of these games tended to be orientated around a scoring system. Now, these can come from the form of point counts, round survives, time spent, or etc. And this highlights the obvious point that when you're creating a mini game, the first thing you should think of is how it's scored. Another important element is competitiveness. If you think about any of the games you've played in the past, the most memorable ones are probably, not definitely, but probably some of the ones that you've played with your friends. For example, I know when the popular app Temple Run came out, I played it quite a bit at first, but then some of my friends started to get it, and the competitiveness sort of went right in, and I played it a lot f simply for the sake of beating my friend's score. Without that competitiveness, I know I would have grown bored of the game very quickly. A final piece of advice I want to give you when you think about your mini games is it doesn't have to be your own idea. Now this may sound a little silly because you may think that you're now plagiarizing or stealing ideas, but it isn't really like that. You can transfer a popular classic mini games such as Connect 4 into Minecraft whilst putting your own little spin on them. This is usually a bunch of fun and goes down well with the community because it's familiar. Anyway, as I said at the start, we're going to be having a look at rock, paper, scissors this episode. So the way I like to think about creating minigames is there's two ways you can go about doing the logic behind it. There's the pure redstone logic path, which involves large complicated structures or circuits all working together to compute the games. The other option, which is a bit more modern, is the command block logic path, which involves thinking through scoreboard puzzles. Both methods are feasible, and of course in some situations the best method is just to combine both types of logic together. The advantages of using command blocks are that they can be used wirelessly and are usually more compact and quicker due to not needing large wires to transfer data. However, the main disadvantages are that they often require clocks and they can create lag. Now, another really bad thing that can be very temperamental and sort of shift people away from command blocks is the fact that they can be very confusing. Especially due to the lack of wires, you can't really follow a command block structure as well as you can a redstone structure. Even if you're good with command blocks, like I would consider myself to be pretty good with command blocks, if someone showed me a big pile of command blocks, I may not be able to figure out what that does unless I have a really close look at what all the commands are specifically doing. Now, now let's actually go into the game and have a look at the rock, paper, scissors example. Alright, so in front of me I have the two versions of the game. On the left I have the command block oriented one, and on the right I have our redstone orientated one. So I'm going to give a quick demonstration first before I show you the mechanics. If I come over here and choose paper, as you can see it does a whole bunch of scoreboard stuff, so I not to turn that off. If I choose rock on this side, it quickly comes up with lose, because paper beats rock, and on this side it says win. Now it's fairly simple, I've just got if this side loses, this side wins, and vice versa, and draw on each side, it's a very simple detection panel. Now over here we have a bit of a different panel just because of the way I did the redstone. We've got win, draw, lose, etc, and we've got these here, so if I do the same test, we put rock on one side, it gives us a light, on this side it's a permanent light, and on this side we have a look and um, what was it we chose? We chose paper I think. If we do that, it comes up with you win on this side and you lose on this side which is the same as here. So now let's have a quick look at the mechanics behind it. Now this by no means is the most compact way of doing it with redstone alone. It's just the easiest way for me to show how it works in general. If you wanted a more compact version of rock, paper, scissors using redstone, I suggest you check out Benny's Cube as he does like a 9x9 nine nine version of it, which I believe is even smaller than my command block version. So that's pretty cool. I suggest you go check that out if you're interested, just to prove that redstone isn't always massively massive compared to command blocks. Anyway, the basic gist of how this works is we have a couple memory cells up front which um, take in the input that the player gives. Then that's locked in and it's 
done for both of these. And basically what we have here is what's called ROM. And it basically checks the combination of both players' answers and then puts an output on. As you can see, there's three different combinations for each win, lose, and draw um, because there are three different options. And that goes to the various different outputs for the win, draw, and lose on either of these sides. And there's just a bit of wires getting them all to the correct lights and whatnot. It's not too complicated, and if you don't understand much of it, then I suggest you go check out the um, Ultimate Guide to Redstone by Benny Cube again. Very good guy, and um, does a lot of awesome content if you're into Redstone logic. Now, if you're into Command Blocks, then that's what I'm here for, and you can check out my Ultimate Guide to Command Blocks series on my channel, which will help you in understanding what I'm about to explain with the Command Block based design. Now. A little heads up, if you don't understand either of what I'm going to be saying here, then again, check out the tutorials, but I'll also be building them on camera, both of them, in the upcoming tutorials. And then we'll be moving on to some bigger projects to help show how it all works and how to design your own minigame. Right, so now I'm going to give you a very brief explanation of the command block system. So we have a very basic user in interface panel that comes into these repeaters and it goes across here. When the game is just started, these blocks will be up. And the reason for that is because we want it to only be triggered once. So as soon as you make your decision, you click the button and then you can't change it because this piston drops down, pulling the block. So if you just press it anymore, it's not going to send a signal through to these command blocks. Now what these command blocks do is they set a score on the objective or the scoreboard RPS, which just simply stands for rock, paper, scissors. It's just a variable I assigned. And each of these sets a different value and well not sets, it adds a different value. So that's why we don't want it to be triggered more than once because otherwise they'd be adding a value over and over again, which would not be good. Um, so it adds a value and the sum of the addition on this side plus the addition on this side will give us a number. And then we can test for that number to see um, which combination of rock, paper or rock, scissors, bloody blah, blah has been chosen and based on that we can then go to a win draw lose variable which are called wdl win draw lose rps rock paper scissors this is kind of my way of making variables you don't have to follow through it if you want you can call that whatever you want if you were to do this so you can see we've got an rps of 10 here and a win draw loser zero that's just to make sure that it hasn't already found a um, good score and it's then going to set the one win draw lose to one what, what's that going to do is it's going to detect it up here um, wdl of one can output into the comparator which will just go into the display so this is kind of using the combination of the sums to produce an answer in my case I was feeling a little, a little um, whizzy about it, and I decided to use um, Fibonacci numbers because they are a set of numbers that can very um, easily, I suppose, be sure of aren't going to produce multiple versions of the same combination. For example, if I was to say have five and four, um, and that produced nine but then if I had six and three on both sides so I said say that was five that was four this was six and this was three for example then combinations of these so five on this side and four on that side would create nine and three on this side and six on that side would also create nine so we wouldn't be able to test for unique combinations and that's why I thought maybe using Fibonacci numbers would help, and it did. So that's the sort of thing that you might be having to think through if you're going to use command blocks, if you're feeling extra whizzy, and you want to create something compact, quick, and powerful like that. So that's just to kind of accentuate the problem and the disadvantage I was talking about earlier with command blocks, which is that they can often require solving or thinking through difficult problems such as this. To create a simple mini game, I had to really think about how I was going to do it in the most efficient way possible. Of course, there would probably be less efficient ways of doing it, but I was sticking to the efficient way. And if you want to do that, then it's definitely not always too easy. Whereas 
sometimes redstone logic can be uh, quite a bit more simple. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I hope you follow through when I actually go through and um, design these on camera in the next couple of videos. If you want to continue on with this series, um, then you should probably do that. And I'll be doing that and then starting on various new projects in the upcoming videos. Hopefully it will teach you how to create mini games and the processes that I use in order to do so. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.